Good afternoon, Gary. Hello. Here we are again um, at Gary's studio, and we're going to read a few poems and talk about the uh, axe handle, his poem, and the making of the axe handle. So, Gary, would you read uh, a few Hanshan poetry, please? In, Cold uh, Mountain. In English. In English. Yeah. It would be great if you read Chinese. Oh, uh, well, my Chinese doesn't really work too well. But yeah, this is uh, uh, one of the several Hanshan, or uh, literally translating that cold mountain mm -hmm. poems, uh, that I was started on by one of my professors at Berkeley years ago, suggested to me that I read these poems and might want to translate them if I felt like it. It was not a, an official assignment even. It was at the end of the year, really. So uh, I did pick up the manuscript uh, of the book, traditional Chinese book, uh, out of the uh, uh, UC Berkeley uh, Asian Library. And uh, I'll start with this poem. Uh, In a tangle of cliffs, I chose a place bird paths, but no trails for men. What's beyond the yard? White clouds clinging to big rocks. Now I've lived here how many years? Again and again, spring and winter pass. Go tell families with silverware and cars. What's the use of all that noise and money? Thank you. I translated um, Cold Mountains uh, into Chinese. Here's the mm. first one. 悬崖中我选了一个地方，那儿只有鸟落，没有人迹。院子后面有什么？白云贴住岩石。我在这儿有多久了？年下一一年，冬去春来。告诉那些家有银器、开着豪车的人，你们的尘嚣和钱财有什么用？And hmm. another Anjan poem, cold mountain poem. Men ask the way to Cold Mountain. Cold Mountain, there's no through trail. In summer, ice doesn't melt. The rising sun blurs in swirling fog. How did I make it? My heart's not the same as yours. If your heart was like mine, you'd get it and be right here. So right. It's exactly. Thank you. 人们问去寒山的路,寒山去哪儿没路,夏天冰不柔化,升起的太阳卷入翻腾的雾。那我是怎么找到的?我的心和你的不同,假如你和我心心相印,你就会找到寒山。Some critic tried to put me down, saying, your poems lack the basic truth of Tao. And I recall the old timers who were poor and didn't care. I have to laugh at him. He misses the point entirely. Men like that ought to stick to making money. <laughs> <laughs> I love this poem. 批评家寒颤我，你的诗缺乏道的真理。我想起远古的时期，无人有钱，无人在乎道。我嘲笑他与道失之交臂，那种人应该留下赚钱。Thank you so much for bringing Hanshan 
cold mountain to America. And now, because of you, cold mountains are, this poet, his poems are flourishing again in China. So, and uh, would you read X handle? And then we can talk about that. So this is the first, and I'll give you the second. Yeah. So this poem is by me, uh, titled X handle. Uh, and uh, then we're going to hear the, a translation of this poem, which is originally in English, uh, into Chinese. X handle. One afternoon, the last week in, August, in April, showing Kai how to throw a hatchet, one half turn and it sticks in a stump. He recalls the hatchet head without a handle in the shop and go gets it and wants it for his own. A broken off X handle is behind the door and it's long enough for a hatchet. We cut it to length and take it with the hatchet head and the working hatchet to the wood block. There, I begin to shape the old handle with the hatchet, and the phrase first learned from Ezra Pound rings in my ears. When making an axe handle, the pattern is not far off. And that line was really in the Book of Odes. And I say this to Kai, look, we'll shape the handle by checking the handle of the axe we cut with. And he sees, and I hear it again. It's in Blue G's Wang Fu, 4th century AD, essay on literature in the preface. Quote, in making the handle of an axe, by cutting wood with an axe, the model is indeed near at hand. My teacher, Shi Xiang Chen, translated that and taught it years ago. And I see, Pound was an axe, Chen was an axe, and I am an axe, and my son a handle soon to be shaping again. Model and tool, craft of culture. How we go on. Okay. Thank you. It's so beautiful. I'm going to read the Chinese now. Translated by me. Fu Bing. Xiao Wu 有把名没病的斧头良好斧头的大小斧柄的长短我第一次学到的旁的名言至于操府伐科
和工具，成为文化的工艺品。我们就是这样向前的。Do you remember the year you you wrote this poem? Oh, about 1963-64, maybe. Okay, and、uh, I'm pretty sure it was written in April because you wrote it in the poem. Could be, then. right? Yeah, yeah, and、uh, and here in this poem, you wrote about、uh, Lu Ji's Wen Fu and Pang's and、uh, the Book of Songs, Book of Odes,、uh -huh. right? And、uh, the poem actually is、uh, in the Book of Odes or Book of Songs,、uh, poem seventy two. Yes, and、um, so could you talk a little bit more how? This poem and Lu Ji's wonderful、um, about the the axe and the handle that helped you make this wonderful axe handle poem. Well, it's a really not so wonderful. It's just a very ordinary poem、mm -mm, about ordinary things. Right.、Uh, but that was because I lived in a world in a society still when I was at that age and. Living or growing up on a farm, that hatchets and handles、uh, and cutting wood with hatchets was taken for granted as normal.、Mm -hmm. Nothing special about it.、Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, uh, we had these、uh, unfinished axe handles, and we had unfinished or broken uh, uh, hatchets and axes around. Uh, and without thinking about it,、uh, uh, just being practical,、mm -hmm. uh, putting another little hatchet together for my son so that he could be a helper in、uh, splitting kindling.、Mm -hmm. Hatchets are smaller than axes. You cut kindling with them. Oh, okay. Kindling is how you start the stove. Right. And then you can put in larger pieces of wood. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So、uh, any combination of woodworking. Uh, wild、uh, firewood working it would be to have a saw, to have an axe, and to have a hatchet.、Mm -hmm. Right, and you use hatchet to play game, right? And I didn't know、the、that because for what? to play the hatchet game. What's that? You throw you throw the hatchet one turn and a half. Oh well, you can try all kinds of things. Okay. You can get farther back and throw it two and a half times. Okay. Uh, which is harder to do,、mm -hmm. but what you're throwing it at is usually a larger log that has been cut off into a round and stacked, so that it'll stick right in it when it hits it. Right. It won't fall That's off. That's difficult to do. Well, if you have the end of the log out, right,、uh, then it sticks, of、right. course. Right. But you can't、uh, get a, a, a an axe or a hatchet easily to to、uh, stick in a board. That's difficult. Well, it depends on the kind of wood it is.、Too. Right. Well. But anyway, we always have these piles of firewood around, big logs too. Right. So we've got pr practice、uh, areas to get back and try our luck at、uh, hatchet throwing. Who was better,、uh, you or 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 Kai? Well,、time? I did it longer and、uh, for many more years than Kai did. Right. He may have gotten really good in in the intervening time. I haven't seen him do that for a long. He told time. me he got really good. And, oh, I'll, I'll bet he did. He、yeah. he generally gets good at things. Yes. Yeah. And、um, so when I started translating this poem, right, and、uh -huh. I had no idea, I couldn't tell the difference between hatchet and axe, and I never heard of hatchet game, the sewing. So I I thought it was a very Simple poem to translate,、um, but as I started translating it, it became very difficult, almost impossible.、Uh, at the same time,、uh, this year in April, I was here, and、um, so early in the morning I was out, and、uh, I saw Kai coming down from his、uh, his living space, and I asked him. Kai, what is the hatchet, and why? What is like one and a half turn, right? <laughs> and he smiled and just pulled out the hatchet. That was actually the hatchet you helped him make in the workshop, right? And no, not necessarily. No, not, well, he no. It was 
he told me that was the one and uh, he's been mm -hmm. like kept he's been keeping it and, uh, and that was his treasure uh -huh. it was like wrapped in leather uh in the leather pocket right and he pulled it out and started throwing to show me the hatchet game uh -huh. right and so he let me uh to throw a few turns and uh, we hit it but it didn't stick right i guess it take it takes some practice. Oh, a little bit of practice, not much. Then Kai took me to your bond library, oh. right? And we walked in, and Kai pulled out a book, and he said, I can't believe it. And I said, what is it? He said, here's the note that marked, like, the notes you wrote down on the book of songs, right? The number of the poem, that number uh 72 Two. that is x handle and translated by arthur whaley and um, and also the note also said you just you were reading uh lu ji's wenfu and you use these and ezra pound also uh men talked about x handle that poem and they use it to write the x handle and I just could not believe that, that, <laughs> but what is the chance, right? And here's that the Book of Songs is like happened, you know, uh, com compiled together by Confucius from over 2000 years ago. And those old songs have been sung and spreading around by Chinese peasants for thousands of years, right? And, um, so Confucius compiled together and then Arthur Whaley, who never traveled to China, translated those poems wonderfully. And Ezra Pound wrote something about it. And actually turned, he used that poem to write his own um, poems. And they are wonderful actually, right? And then in the fourth century, uh, this uh, Lu Ji wrote his first, China's first literary criticism right and his poem he was he was also a poet but nobody read his poetry everyone studies every Chinese had to study his literary criticism and then how many years ago you happened to uh, study Lu Ji's Wenfu was Professor Chen when was that what well, year about was 30 that? years ago 30 years ago? Yeah. And more than that. Maybe more. Yeah. Berkeley. What year were you in Berkeley? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> that was a 19, long time ago. 1973? Yeah. 72, that was, 73? That was almost 50 years ago. Okay. Yeah, 50. Right? And, uh, but all these things, just like, they were hanging, not entangled together, but, and then they all gathered, they were gathered in your poem right yes that's true and and readers right people had all kinds there's so many like literal criticism essays about x handle and uh and i did when i was reading x handle i didn't really put all these things together until until kai was showing me this the sewing hatchet Right, and I took a photo, and I saw until also until Kai pulled out that the uh, Arthur Whaley's book and mm -hmm. saw your note, and I just like, oh my God, this is how that's what it means. How, like, how uh, the world, uh, how we go on, you know, <laughs> right? right, like the crafts, you know, to be. Um, and my, you know, uh, Chen was an axe, I'm an axe, and my son a handle, soon to be shaping again, model and tool, craft of a culture, culture, how we go on, right? And all these like hanging, and I took a photo of Kai throwing the hatchet, and the photo shows that his hatchet just hanging in midair, <laughs> right? And just suddenly I realized, oh, this is what quantum physics Zeno effect means the standing arrow the arrow when you shoot an arrow 
the arrow appears to be going forward very fast. But if you capture it and shorten it and make a standstill, the arrow in reality is standing still in the air, right? And it's our perception that arrow is moving forward, right? So this is the, the magic of poetry and magic of translation. We capture the arrow and make it stand in the air, you know? Well, so that's very well said from the standpoint of the educated person. Thank you. And for the uneducated person, it's unnecessary. Well, but they Because can they still... already know it. Right, that's right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> they just, they already know how to do it. And they know what they it go is. Out. Yeah. Yeah. But it took me like, it took me so many years. I know. Well, so that's why... Maybe it isn't a good thing to go to college. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> I agree. There's not. Uh, there's no need to do a PhD, right? You know. Not and, unless you're going to do something with it. Yeah, and. Um, and you don't need to do that. You don't need to have a PhD to do something with an axe. That's right. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah, we also. Can you talk a little bit more about the translation? What it means to you? Because you basically started like uh, everything from translating Han Zhen's Cold Mountain poetry. Right? Well, uh, you know, I didn't have a translation exactly. I had several translations. Right. And I had the original Chinese. Mm -hmm. And it's really easy to read that Chinese. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, as much as the translations, I was reading it from the Chinese. Right. Uh, and the translations were clear and simple, so it all was effortless, actually. I said, oh, I understand what that's about, because I already knew what it was right. from my own practice right. with right. tools. Okay. Right. The hatchet game. You already know the hatchet game. Well, I got game. a lot of other tools, too, which I haven't written poems about yet. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, huh. uh, it, it to me it was never anything special. Okay. Yeah. Do you think that's what poetry should be? Nothing really special. It just find. Well, a really successful poem is not special. Right. Exactly. You don't have to show it off. No. People say, "Oh, wow." Right. And that doesn't require an explanation. Right. 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 <laughs> I remember once uh, uh, Robert Starford, the poet, Yeah. he read a poem, which is a wonderful poem, and then a person from the audience stood up and said, that's a very good poem. I could have written it myself. Then Robert said, but he didn't. That's another point. Yeah. Yeah. That means my uh, understanding of that is Beauty and truth lives everywhere, right? And uh, everything just in life, in the woods, in water, in birds, you know, in the food we eat, uh, we just need to like appreciate that. You have to see it. Yeah. You have to see it and appreciate it. Art, art makes you see things that you should have seen anyway. <laughs> Is that the purpose of art, you think? That's part of it, yeah. Not the what, only thing. What, what else for the art? Well, sometimes it, you, art gives you keys to really untangling it. Yes, yes. Uh, but some things are really very straightforward too. Right, but uh, often we don't. And we you just ignore them. Right. You know, you don't have to be uh, a genius to look at a flower. Right. But somebody has to tell you, "Hey, look at that flower." Sometimes. <laughs> okay. Exactly. <laughs> Steve, do you have a question? No? You sure? Nothing back here. Mm -hmm. No, he doesn't need to do that because he's already figured it out. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Gary. Well, that was fun. Yeah. Now we should get into the other stuff pretty soon. We should. Yeah. <laughs> that was the easy stuff there. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what keeps us alive, right? And uh, young. We can say that. I'm not sure it's true, but yeah. I think so. Well, I think so. Good. I believe so. We are <laughs> what we believe. 
Yeah, that's true. Unfortunately. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay.